Dive deep into timeless tales. Join our Bible's literature series where ancient stories come alive. Discover the Bible like never before as captivating narratives, not just sacred texts. Your literary adventure awaits. Dive into the Bible with us, a tapestry of tales and truth, where the sacred texts shape community conversations. Understanding the essence of love in the Gospel of John. In the first part of the Gospel of John, Jesus performs signs that carry a deeper meaning. Through different perspectives, the narrative emphasizes Jesus as the giver of life. This lecture delves into the second half of the Gospel, where the challenge of interpreting the significance of Jesus' crucifixion persists. The central question explored is how to understand the crucifixion in light of Jesus being the giver of life. By examining the final chapters of John, the lecture explores the connection between the crucifixion, self-giving love, the continuation of relationship, the fulfillment of Jesus' work, and the dynamics of faith. The concept of self-giving love is introduced in John chapter 13 where Jesus, knowing his departure is imminent, expresses love for his disciples until the end. The writer encourages leaders to interpret Jesus' actions as expressions of love. One notable event is Jesus washing his disciples' feet, an act that challenges societal norms. By humbly serving and washing their feet, Jesus exemplifies the extent of his love and devotion. Even when faced with Judas, who would betray him, Jesus continues to demonstrate love by washing his feet, confronting evil and hatred. In the Gospel of John, this radical love defines Jesus' actions and culminates in his crucifixion. Jesus' words in John chapter 15, verse 13, and I quote, Greater love is no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends, unquote, foreshadow his ultimate act of love on the cross. The disciples are instructed to love one another as Jesus loves them, recognizing that they receive a love that surpasses their own capacities and inspiring them to express that love. Jesus' Sermon on the Bread of Life takes place in Capernaum's synagogue and is renowned for its con controversial teachings. It specifically is addresses the Jewish anticipation of the new manna. In this discourse, Jesus speaks of consuming his flesh and drinking his blood leading to debates about the literal or symbolic nature of his words and how in, he intended to provide this flesh and blood for consumption. To understand Jesus' meaning, it is essential to closely examine his words within their original context. By doing so, we discover that Jesus' bread of life discourse revolves around the Jewish expectations of a new Moses and the return of the heavenly manna. Interestingly, this connection is often overlooked in discussions on Jesus' perspective on the Eucharist. For example, when examining the broader context of Jesus' sermon, we encounter the account of his miraculous feeding of 5,000 people in the desert. Drawing a parallel between Moses, who provided manna to the Israelites, and Jesus, who feeds the crowds with bread, is evident. The response from the Jewish audience is twofold. First, they recognize Jesus as the Messiah, leading Jesus to withdraw from them as they attempt to make him their king. And second, they identify Jesus as a new Moses, referring to the anticipated prophet like Moses mentioned in Deuteronomy. Continuing in John chapter 6, we find that the people's recognition of Jesus as the new Moses leads directly into the bread of life discourse. 
After witnessing the miracle, they seek Jesus and demand another sign, specifically asking Him to bring down the manna from heaven. The request reflects their understanding of the Messiah's role as a new Moses and their anticipation of the re- restorative nature of the manna. However, they desired this new manna to be provided continuously. Unlike the previous manna that sustained the Israelites for 40 years. This request for the Messiah's manna prompts Jesus to delve into the bread of life discourse, which is one of his longest teachings in the fourth gospel. Rather than analyzing the entire sermon, the focus is on the part where Jesus explicitly teaches about his real presence in the food and drink of the Last Supper, found in John chapter 6, verses 48 to 58. This section holds significant importance in Jesus' sermon and our study. Jesus begins the sermon by using the manna to reveal his heavenly origin and stress the importance of believing in him. He then shifts the focus on the significance of consuming his flesh. His references to the biblical manna play a crucial role in these verses. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes, from, that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This teaching leads to a dispute among the Jews, who question how it is possible to eat his flesh. Jesus reiterates the necessity of consuming his flesh and blood for eternal life emphasizing that his flesh is real food and his blood real drink. Here he further explains that those who partake in his flesh and blood will abide in him and he in them. Jesus concludes by comparing the bread from heaven he offers with the manna eaten by their ancestors, emphasizing that the bread he provides grants eternal life unlike the manna that provided temporary sustenance to the Israelites. Both Protestant and Catholic New Testament scholars widely recognize that Jesus is referring to the Eucharistic food and drink he will provide his disciples at the Last Supper. The explicit mention of his flesh and blood as real food and real drink in John chapter 6, verse 55 supports this understanding. Additionally, there are striking parallels between Jesus' statements in the Bread of Life discourse and the accounts of the Last Supper, such as the comparison between the bread He gives for the life of the world and His body given for His disciples. Although scholars acknowledge that Jesus speaks about the Eucharist, The question remains whether he meant his words literally, symbolically, or in another sense. Understanding how Jesus utilized ancient Jewish beliefs about the manna can help provide insight. It is worth noting that Jesus directly associates the Eucharist with the anticipated new manna from heaven when he delivers his most explicit teaching on his real presence. By examining the latter part of the sermon, we observe that Jesus begins by mentioning, Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, from John chapter 6, verse 48, and concludes by contrasting the Eucharist with the old manna, stating, This is the bread that comes down from heaven, not like the bread the ancestors ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. John chapter 6, verse 
Jesus deliberately incorporates references to the manna from heaven when emphasizing the mystery of His presence in the Eucharist. This choice carries great significance. Instead of drawing parallels with the Passover lamb or the mysterious bread of the presence to elucidate the Eucharist, Jesus opts for the Jewish expectation of new heavenly bread and identifies the Eucharist with the manna of the Messiah. Considering this contextual information sheds light on Jesus' intended meaning. It becomes evident that Jesus employed the imagery of the manna to convey the significance of partaking in his flesh and blood. The emphasis is not merely symbolic representation, but a profound and transformative reality. Jesus connects the Eucharist to the fulfillment of the anticipated heavenly bread, indicating that through participation in the Eucharistic meal, believers receive the true spiritual sustenance that leads to eternal life. In summary, Lecture 28 explores the essence of love in the Gospel of John, particularly examining self-giving love and its connection to the crucifixion. The lecture highlights Jesus' acts of love, such as washing the disciples' feet, and emphasizes the command to love one another as Jesus loves. The lecture also delves into the Bed of Life sermon in which Jesus addresses the Jewish anticipation of the new manna. By closely examining the context and Jesus' references to Moses and the manna, the lecture provides insights into the meaning of Jesus' statements about consuming his flesh and blood. Additionally, the lecture explores the parallels between Jesus' teachings on the Eucharist and the Last Supper, emphasizing the real presence of Jesus in the sacramental elements. Overall, the lecture uncovers the profound nature of love in the Gospel of John and its connection to Jesus' sacrificial act on the cross. Stay enthralled with epic sagas and ageless wisdom. Continue with us in our Bible as Literatures series. Unearth stories and symbols in a fresh literary light. The next chapter of your riveting journey is just around the corner. Thank you for joining us in this insightful journey through the Gospel of John. We've explored the profound concepts of self-giving love, the enigmatic bread of life discourse, and the deep spiritual connection in Jesus' teaching. If you've been moved by the powerful message of love and faith we discussed, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. This ensures you won't miss out on our next episode. Episode 32, From Jerusalem to the Ends of the Earth, The Early Church's Impact in Acts. This next episode promises to be just as enriching, delving into the formation and expansion of the early church community. Stay tuned for more enlightening discussions. Remember, every episode brings a new perspective to enrich your understanding. So subscribe now and continue this fascinating journey with us.